now that we've gathered the wells and brought them to a central point, we have to condition the gas before it can put into be put into a transmission pipeline. Uh, we do this in processing plants where we're going to remove a lot of the contaminants, inert gases, and extract as much of the heavier hydrocarbons as we can to sell them as propane, ethane, butane, etc. Basic operation of a processing plant for natural gas is to remove the heavy hydrocarbons. This protects the burner tip from volatile fuels such as propane and butane. They have a very high BTU content. Also, by removing the heavy hydrocarbons, we manage to produce the much needed natural gas liquids, ethane, propane, butane, isobutane, and natural gasolines. There are various processes uh, to extract the heavy hydrocarbons. The majority of natural gas liquids are produced through a condensation process. If you recall from high school physics, when you increase the pressure of something, you also raise its temperature. Then when you lower the pressure, the temperature cools down and condensation will occur. Uh, another process is to use uh, oils that can actually absorb some of the light hydrocarbons as the natural gas stream is passed over it. And finally, there is fractionation, where the natural gas liquids are moved from a composite um, stream into the various fractions, the propane, ethane, butane, etc. Another one of the operations of processing plant is to purify the gas stream. Raw natural gas coming out of the well has contaminants as well as inert gases which merely take up space. So the key here is to remove as much of the water as possible, uh, the hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Nitrogen can be removed using nitrogen rejection units at the processing plant. Um, dehydration can occur by using glycol absorption. Uh, glycol is nothing more than ethylene glycol, the antifreeze that uh, you would have in your car. Its boiling point is much higher than that of water, so when you boil the ethylene glycol, the water evaporates off of that. There's also a process known as amine treatment, where sulfur can be extracted as well as carbon dioxide. There are various types of processing plants. The basic operation would be a simple separator tower. This is where the natural gas would flow through the bottom of a tower. The tower internally has collector trays, and as the gas flows through the bottom to the top, the natural gas or methane will rise to the top and move on out of the vessel, and each of the liquids will lay on the trays based on their weight, with the heavier liquids on the bottom. Varying pressures and temperatures with compressors that uh, will recirculate the natural gas throughout the processing plant, and also reboilers. These are actually uh, furnaces uh, fueled by natural gas that will heat up the gas stream and then cool it down, hoping to knock out as much of the hydrocarbons as possible to create the natural gas liquids. Another form of plant is what we refer to as cryogenic. Uh, most people think of cryogenic plants as freezing. The term being used here means to drop the temperature of the natural gas dramatically. You heat it up and then drop it as cool as you can. There are refrigerants used at the plant. Uh, you cool it down, you expand the stream, and then you'll cool down again and create condensation, which knocks the liquids out. And you circulate the gas through a processing plant as many times as possible until you have approximately 98% methane, which is then returned to the transmission pipe. The natural gas liquids are collected and brought to market. Another type of plant is known as a straddle plant. This is one that merely straddles the transmission pipeline itself, extracts natural gas from the pipeline, processes it, and then redelivers the gas to the processing plant itself. It does not have natural gas wells gathered behind it. Here is a diagram of the generalized natural gas processing schematic. The first stage, as you can see from the wellhead, is to separate out any heavy oils from the gas. Then you have a condensate separator. This is where the um, water and some of the heavier liquids get taken out at first. The next phase is to totally dehydrate the gas stream, remove as much water as possible. And then removing the contaminants, the hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, uh, nitrogen, etc. And of course, then you can also remove the nitrogen using a nitrogen uh, rejection unit. 
or uh, NRU. And then the demethanizer, again, methane is natural gas. So the demethanizer is going to extract uh, the natural gas and return it to the pipeline on the residue side of the plant itself. And then finally, the composite natural gas liquid stream is broken down into its individual fractions of ethane, propane, butane, the isomer of butane, isobutane, the pentanes, which are also known as C5 pluses, and then natural gasolines. This is data from the U.S. Energy Information Agency. This shows the increase in production in uh, both natural gas processing liquids as well as liquefied petroleum gases over the years. There has been an increase, uh, especially in the last few years, because of the new shale plays. Where there is oil, there is what is known as associated natural gas. It's produced in association with the oil, and as such, it's very rich in hydrocarbon liquids, and so it's processed. There are also natural gas wells that they themselves are high in hydrocarbon content, and so those get processed as well. The worldwide market for plastics has led to an increase in the demand for ethane. Ethane is converted into ethylene, uh, which is then converted into polyethylene and other plastics. Uh, propane, pentanes, isobutanes have all seen an increase in the last decade. Here's just a couple of pictures of some processing plants. Uh, in the upper left, you have a, a simple plant, um, small volume. You can see the tall tower there. Uh, that would be your separator tower. In the lower right, you have a skid-mounted plant, which would be one section of a much larger plant. You would see multiple of these in a large plant facility, but both of these plants are performing essentially the same function, and that's to achieve condensation by varying temperatures and pressures and knock out natural gas liquids. In this diagram, we look at the gas that comes into the plant, and we're really focusing here on the amount of gas that is consumed by the plant or is knocked out in the form of natural gas liquids. So the heating content, the BTU content of the gas, is reduced across the plant. We actually refer to that as PVR, or plant volume reduction. You can see in the diagram that the inlet gas is about 1,000 uh, MCF at a BTU content of 1.025, which is also known as the BTU factor. So we have 1,025 MMBTUs entering the plant, and then you move over to the residue gas, and you can see it's been knocked down to 967 MMBTU. The difference between those represents some of the fuel that is used by the processing plant itself, but largely it's the reduction in the amount of heating content that has occurred by knocking out the heavy hydrocarbons in the form of natural gas liquids. We're now going to talk about the individual natural gas liquids and the primary markets for them. This is, again, in information for the Energy Information Agency, which is part of the U.S. Department of Energy. You can see here that um, conventional crude oil and lease condensate um, has increased uh, over the last few years and is expected to continue to increase through the year 2035. This will no doubt be in large part due to the shale plays and the discovery of more and more oil in those shale plays. Natural gas plant liquids also are on the uptake, and again, mostly driven by the associated natural gas and the heavy hydrocarbon gas that's been found in some of the new shale plays, as well as the increased demand for natural gas liquids uh, in the global markets. The smaller amounts, you can see your unconventional oils, some biofuels, and then again, what is known as um, gas to liquids uh, processing from natural gas. These are the main natural gas liquids components. These are the hydrocarbon liquids that are derived from natural gas. First, you have ethane, whose uh, molecular symbol is C2H6, propane C3H8, butane C4H10, isobutane, uh, the symbol for it is IC4 because it's an isomer of butane, the C4s. The pentane C5H12, otherwise known as C5 pluses. Then you have the natural gasoline, some are C5, some are anywhere from C6 to C9. And then condensates will all be, these are the heavy liquids. These will all be C6 pluses, and generally speaking, they can be uh, 
uh, moved to crude oil refineries and broken down into um, further products there. So each symbol represents the number of carbon atoms and the number of attached hydrogen atoms, thus the term hydrocarbons. As we mentioned earlier, the NGLs must be removed from the gas stream. The B2 content will be too volatile for any type of burner tip use. They are used as chemical feedstocks. They're also used as gasoline blending components. The raw stream coming out of the processing plants, for the most part, um, is a composite stream known as Y-grade. So these NGLs are basically ready for shipment by pipeline or by truck to uh, other pipeline uh, outlets. And ultimately, they head to a fractionator. Not every processing plant has a fractionation tower. The fractionation process separates uh, the Y-grade into its various individual component products. These are known as purity products. They represent approximately 90% of the single liquid, for instance, propane, ethane, butane. Let's start with propane. Propane represents approximately 40% of the natural gas liquids market in the United States. Primarily, it's used for home heating and cooking. It also can be used as a chemical feedstock to make propylene for plastics. The primary markets for propane, Gulf Coast Petrochemicals, Mont Bellevue is the key natural gas liquid hub in the United States. It has a fractionation tower. It's a delivery and trading point. There are pipelines that deliver natural gas liquids to the plant as well as take away to markets. It has salt dome storage for natural gas liquids in the area. And it is a uh, global market uh, in terms of the ability to export liquids to other countries from there. There is a secondary market in the mid-continent part of the United States located in Conway, Kansas. They have a smaller fractionation facilities there. Um, natural gas liquids, Y-grade, are delivered to Conway. They also have storage on site. It is a trading point, and there is petrochemical refining facilities adjacent to the Conway processing plant. There are pipelines that deliver natural gas liquids to and from the plant. And there is southbound pipeline capacity to Mont Bellevue for uh, NGLs that cannot be fractionated at Conway. Ethane represents approximately 25% of the natural gas liquids market. It is a chemical feedstock. Primarily, it is converted or cracked into ethylene and propylene for plastics. It's rarely used as a fuel source. It can also be left in the gas stream uh, as methane, what we call ethane rejection. They are not recovering ethane. They leave it in the natural gas stream. Uh, it is very price dependent. One has to equate the BTU equivalent of ethane versus natural gas to determine whether you recover the ethane or you leave the ethane in the gas stream. Same market hubs as other natural gas liquids, Mont Bellevue, Texas, Conway, Kansas. Uh, the term EP mix is used quite often uh, when natural gas liquids are shipped in the form of 80% of ethane and 20% of propane. And again, that EP mix is strictly used for ethylene production. Butane or N-butane, as in normal butane, 85% of butane is used for gasoline blending. It's mostly used in the winter when the reed vapor pressure of gasoline is high. Reed vapor pressure is, um, as the footnote says, is an indicator of the ability of the gasoline to vaporize at atmospheric pressure. So from the standpoint of emissions, we do not want gasoline to have a high vapor uh, pressure. Therefore, a lot of it escapes to the atmosphere. Uh, primary markets for butane, Gulf Coast and Northeast refineries. Uh, market hub again, Mont Bellevue, Texas. Um, it can be a cracking component for crude refining. If you recall in the presentation on crude, there is one of the processes where some of the product is cracked. Some type of catalyst is used to crack it down to further products. Butane is one of those catalysts. One of the most obviously obvious uses is as lighter fluid. It's also propellant and aerosol sprays. It replaced what used to be the CFCs or chlorofluorohydrocarbons, which were deemed to have an adverse impact on the ozone layer. And so those have been banned, and butane is one of the propellants that has substituted for the CFCs. It can be used in household cooking, also as bottled gas, and it can be used as a refrigerant. Isobutane, the isomer of butane, ibutane, or sometimes known as methylpropane. It has similar uses to 
butane. It's used for gasoline blending as a chemical feedstock. It is also used as a refrigerant, especially in automobiles. It's known as R600A. And it's also known as isooctane. It is an additive um, for gasoline that prevents the knocking when the octane level may be too low for particular engines. The natural gasolines or pentanes, these are the chemical symbols C5+, primarily used for gasoline blending again uh, to uh, maintain, stabilize the reed vapor pressure. Mostly in the summertime, the pentanes are added to gasoline. They can be used for ethylene production. They're also used as industrial solvents. They can be used as for what is known as an ethanol denaturant. If you think about the production of ethanol, it comes from corn and grains. It is actually pure alcohol, the type of alcohol that could be consumed. And so something needs to be added to it so that um, people are, in essence, discouraged from, from drinking the ethanol. So the natural gasolines can be added to the ethanol as a denaturant, so it will not be consumed by humans, but it will be safe to burn in uh, automobiles and trucks. It can also be used to dilute crude, and its major market hub is Montbellevue, Texas.